What's up guys? Welcome back to another RSD tutorial. Today we're going to be covering the 3D text effect in Adobe Illustrator using the blend option. So let's get right into it. I'm Matt, a designer here at Red Shark. Today we'll be in Adobe Illustrator doing the 3D text effect using the blend option. Uh, I just want to let you know that the working file for this will be in the description below. Go check out the blog and follow along. I'll hop into the blend recorder to get it done. Okay, so like I said before, uh, we're going to be in Adobe Illustrator today, and if you've downloaded your working file from the blog and you've already got it pulled up, uh, we're in the program and let's get into it. So this is uh, kind of like what we're going to be going for in the end result here, and I'll keep the steps pulled up on the left as best as I can so we can follow along. Uh, step number one, let's get into it, would be to create two unique gradients in circles. So I'm just going to put that in there like that, and then with these two still selected, we're going to make a blend, so we'll go object, down to blend, and make. And we have this smooth transition between the two. Sometimes it can be a bit choppy, but to fix that, have your selection made, go back to blend, blend options. And this will bring up the blend options panel. And from here, you can change how many steps you want in between. 150 is pretty good for the size I'm working on here, so I'm just going to keep it at that and move on. Okay, so moving on from step one, after we've made our blend, I've just copied it, wrote it down here, made it a little bit smaller. Step two is really really the easiest one. All you're gonna do is draw the strokes that you wanna add the gradient to. Uh, for me, I've kind of hand lettered this little RSD monogram. Um, and like I said, I've copied one of these blends for each one of the strokes that I have. So the leg of the R, the body of the R, the S and the D are all their own. So I have four copies here. Uh, you've also noticed that I've made them smaller. All this is gonna do is keep my composition legible. Uh, if I were to blend with something this big, I guess you could get the impression that it would be massive and you wouldn't be able to tell that this was an R, an S, or a D. So step two, like I said, you just draw your strokes. It doesn't have to be letters, it could be a circle, it could be triangle, it could be square, it could be whatever. Uh, that's step two, so we'll move into step three now. All right, moving on to step three, this is gonna be basically our final step, unless we're gonna you know, do the bonus step at the end. Uh, but I've copied what we have up here down and what we're gonna do is grab one of our uh, strokes and grab one of our blends, go back up to object, come down to blend, and then choose replace spine. And as you can see, it's taken the one that was down at the bottom and replaced the, the leg with that blend and made it throughout the whole stroke. Now uh, we'll move on to number the second one here, the part of the other part of the R, do the same thing, uh, blend, replace spine. Now for this one, as you can see, I'll zoom in here a little bit, it's very choppy, like I mentioned in uh, step one. So to fix this, we're just gonna keep the selection, go back to object, blend, blend options, and then increase the amount of steps you have here. So I'm just gonna go 250 for good measure. And it looks better already, so we'll just hit okay. And then I'll go on and do the rest of them and show you the final product. Okay, so here's my final composition. I've got all of my blends set to all my strokes and we're left with this nice 3D text uh, variant, I guess you could call it. Okay, so now that we have our, basically our finished product up here, I just drug it down one more time to show you guys this bonus step. This one is super simple. All you do is you make your selection. Uh, you come down to effect, distort and transform, and then roughen. And as you can see, they're a little bit changed. I'll just zoom in so we can see it a little bit better here. So with the selection made, like I said, we'll go effect, distort and transform, roughen. And pull up this panel. So if you want to play with these values, let's see, I'll do 50 here. Give it a minute. Uh, do 30 here. Let's see what it looks like. Pretty cool, pretty furry. Uh, I go down a little bit with the detail. Maybe I need to go up a little bit with the detail. That's not too bad. So you play around with these. This is another one of those functions where depending on the size of your file or the size of your composition, these numbers will come into play. They'll always be different, but the more you mess with it, the more you'll figure out how it works. I hit okay here. Uh, this looks pretty cool. And another cool thing about the rough and transform technique 
is that if you don't like it, you can always come back to your appearance panel, click roughen, and change the values again. Or take your trash can and get rid of it entirely. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, if you found it helpful, please leave a like, maybe subscribe. Uh, if you want to see more Adobe Illustrator tutorials, head over to our Instagram page and give us a follow. And I'll see you in the next one.